Hey, what's up guys, Sir Eminon here, and we are back with another episode, or rather commentary, of the Reddit Championship series. Uh, this is going to be round 5 of the second edition, uh, which uh, MBT here and I have continually been ho or, uh, commentating and hosting. So, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Um, it's about 10,000 degrees where I am. I refuse to put in uh, the AC because I'm locked in a war with uh, the sun god. Um, but I will happily swelter for the ability to commentate over decks that we haven't seen in a long while. There's some interesting stuff in this match, and I can't wait to check it out. And speaking of heat and fire-themed decks, we actually have Salomon Great here uh, being piloted by Chiquito Ray versus Buster Brown, who is going to be playing uh, Paleozoic Frogs. So as, uh, as you just mentioned, these are decks that we haven't really seen in quite some time. Um, they've definitely taken uh, their spot from the limelight away from, you know, the new Secret Slayers decks, but um, these decks definitely still have the capability to thrive. They've gotten new tools at their disposal. Uh, for example, we see a Parallel Exceed from Eternity Code in Salomon Great, which is just essentially an extra extender to get into link plays like Axis Code Talker or Rank 4 Payoffs like Abyss Dweller. Uh, and as for uh, Paleozoic, we got some, uh, you know, continual new traps, things like a Gravedigger's Trap Hole to try and just combat like hand traps. Uh, and with Toad going to one, uh, this player is actually opting to play copies of Xyz Reborn uh, to try and just uh, have more recursion and recyclability. Xyz Reborn was a uh, tech in Paleozoic Frog, I think back when it was a grass deck, right after uh, that Grass Looks Greener had been released. Uh, just because you were looking for traps that you could play, uh, there weren't, you know, uh, 15 good traps in the format, so Xyz Reborn was slotted in, now doing duty as a Toad Rectifier. You can also see uh, in the extra deck of the Paleozoic Frog player a copy of Last Warrior from Another Planet, and uh, one guess as to what that will be used for. Um, while Paleozoic Frog, of course, lost a lot in the last couple of bandlets, the move to Master Rule 5 means that you can very profitably play something like uh, Opabinia Control uh, during the mid-game, only pivoting to Toad in scenarios where you absolutely need hard negation um, and are able to recur it afterwards as well. I think the favorite part, my favorite part about this list is the inclusion of Infinitrack Fortress Megaclops, which was previously only really seen in a Zodiac, but it looks like this player is trying to incorporate, uh, you know, alongside, of course, Exceeds Reborn, just ways to Exceed spam, as you mentioned under Master Rule 5, uh, gives the deck more potential to just try and uh, spam the board as quickly as you can. Uh, so we'll see if that's actually going to make an appearance here today. It's like half uh, Waking the Dragon target, half extremely optimistic end boss. Alright, so let's go ahead and just jump into the gameplay. So it looks like Paleozoic won the die roll. Well, that's uh, great news because I think they probably could not win if they were forced to go second against Salaman Great. Being able to set traps is going to do something, but as Floodgates have become less powerful, uh, they're going to need a lot of really great stuff to beat uh, Salaman Great's just continual onslaught of... All right, so we see a copy of Nibiru as well in the opening hand of Salomon Great, which we'll see if that actually manages to get any mileage in this matchup. Typically in control matchups, you know, the, the decks don't typically apply a lot of pressure or aggression, but um, some decks, uh, like Altergeist, can actually pop off. Uh, same with Paleo if they are able to, like, link spam and things of that nature. But uh, going first here for Paleozoic, uh, just going to lead off with a copy of Desires. Nothing too crazy here. Yeah, Desires um, always has uh, a bit of a downside in Paleo. You know, you're really only playing two copies of Ronin Toten, and if you banish uh, one of them, it becomes much more difficult to win the game. Uh, but you really can't pass up uh, the ability to fire off something like a Pot of Desires. Unfortunately, looks like this one has uh, has not gone well for our Paleozoic friend. Uh, I, is that triple swap in the banish pile? I think that is three copies of Swap Frog, yes. So... Oh my gosh. Uh, we'll, we'll, looks like we're going to have a bit of a trouble actually accelerating the pace of the game. Uh, so we'll just see how Ronin Toten set 3 or 4 ends up being. It looks like it's going to be set 3 to enable Dynamiscus. I, um, I honestly like, might even not play Ronin Toten. It's just such a great discard off of Dynamiscus, but it's unlikely you'd be able to fire two of them off anyway. The Salaman Great player has absolutely everything they need. Uh, an extender in will, access to Gazelle, a circle. Uh, that Nibiru is clogging the hand, but I think they're not too beat up about it. Yeah, this has pretty much all the uh, actual good Salaman Great monsters in it. So uh, we're going to leave off with a copy of Circle playing Fowl, which is 
uh, pretty interesting because I've seen a lot of players cut this in favor of uh, just playing Parallel Exceed, but uh, more rank four spam, I suppose, is what the uh, what the goal is here. This individual is on three rank fours: Abyss Dweller, Baguska, which are pretty standard, and Dugaris, which is a fantastic way. Uh, to kind of make up the lack of extra deck space uh, with a monster that's a bit of a jack of all trades. Yeah, and the cool thing with Dagaris is that it's a fire, so if you open, like, say, just one Salomon Great plus a Parallel Exceed, you can actually make Sunlight Wolf with it after. So um, it's not too bad, it's just like an extra uh, way to access your later Salomon Great pieces. We're going to see a normal summon of Jack Jaguar uh, and a special summon of Fowl. I really no way to uh ooh, thinking about the response to summon uh i don't know summon limit would look good here i don't think dynamicious is really worth playing uh on jack jaguar specifically maybe he's gonna target foul uh just because it might actually force a back row here with its other effect um and it looks like that's gonna be the play well all right uh there's one paleozoic in the graveyard one more trap activation gets another one and we are well on our way to toad uh, provided that the Salman Great player doesn't do anything else, which seems unlikely. Right, linking off into Bailinx, probably going to trigger both Bailinx and Gazelle. Uh, Gazelle is going to be met with a strike. Ooh, did they trigger that? In which direction? Oof. Uh, yeah, it I was will... Bailinx channeling one, Gazelle channeling two, and Strike channeling three. It seems like. Huh. Well, well, all right. I mean, we take those, I suppose. Salman Great Sanctuary added to hand. Uh, we will be able to will back this copy of a. Uh, Gazelle, and unfortunately for our Paleozoic player, um, the Gazelle has not activated its on-field effect yet, so uh, it will be able to do so after it's resummoned. Yeah, provided it doesn't get hit by the uh, Paleozoic Olenoids here, uh, which it is promptly going to be met with. And chaining okay. Dynamiscus. Well, uh, this is everything the Dino player needs, or the uh, the Paleozoic player needs. Uh, monsters on field, no way to get over a Dynamicious, and uh, what appears to be a pass back. Yeah, so what seemed to be a very explosive hand uh, ended up actually just being met with all the right answers. Here comes the Jack Jaguar at minimum, right? We're going to target the uh, Baylinx that was the Incarnation Summit. It's going to be met with Fiend Griefing, and all of a sudden the Salaman Great player has snatched uh, from an easy victory uh, what looks to be a defeat. Uh, Jack Jaguar back into the deck, or they're going to send a copy of Back Jack and trigger that for additional advantage. I mean, this is about as good as it gets. Yeah, so we're likely going to get another trap here, plus we're going to draw for turn, and we already have uh, three level 2 bodies on the field. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and end phase, grab ourselves Canadia. Canadia is an interesting card. Ooh, and card of demise, the draw off the top. While it's great to refill the hand, I think probably we're just making a toad or a uh, an Oleonades plus a toad this turn. Or an Opabinia, rather. Oh, looks like we're just going to go straight into the battle phase first. Uh, maybe fearing like sure. an errant strike. Uh, could be playing around Roar, I suppose. Or we just want to activate oh, no. card oh, demise. Activate card well, if nothing else, getting three extra traps is pretty good here. Yeah, certainly. Oxy the draw for turn. Uh, there's still a Gazelle in Grave, but no way to access it. The Nibiru is literally useless. We're going to activate Morella, sending what I expect will be a Lost Wind to the Graveyard. And this is looking pretty pretty dire for Salomon Great at this position, because uh, you have to contend with three back row plus the inevitable Toad that's coming next turn. I would consider just Soloming this. It uh, looks like they're not going to. Instead, they're going to be able to pick up a copy of Roar from this Foxy, uh, put a Lady Debug and a Signet Mining back on top of the deck, and then uh, continue from there. And we're going to Book of Moon this copy of Foxy on Resolution and bring back a fourth Paleozoic name. So... Uh, this is probably the most amount of Paleozoics uh, I've ever seen on a single board state. Uh, hilariously, these aren't effect monsters, so they can't even make something like a Bortle Sword. Um, but they will be able to make enough uh, monsters to completely wall the... Uh, ooh, Coral Anemone, the uh, Tom and Great player out of the game by way of something like an access code. Right, I do believe uh, Coral Anemone locks you into water monsters, though, after you use its effect. Uh, so that is true. Looks like we're just going to be going for a bunch of uh, Obabinias and Toads, or Anomalocaris, the other uh, oh. the other rank, too. So this All is right. uh, in-theme sure. Dryden. 
uh, going to be met with an impermanence, but of course we can just chain a Paleozoic to that. And out comes the Toad afterwards, I'd expect. All right. And yep, here we go. So we're going to just clear the board, uh, do some damage, and from this position it seems... Uh, it seems like it's all locked up for Paleozoic. Yeah, uh... Somehow they've walked away with this match in which they absolutely bricked and their opponent was given all the tools in the world. Uh, they'll activate... Um, <laughs> looks like they're trying to activate the effect of uh, infinite impermanence targeting the Toad before it's able to summon, but unfortunately Salomon Great Sanctuary is going to complicate that. Uh, sorry, dog, you've got a card on your side of the field. Yeah, but regardless, there is pretty much no play here. Like, there's no playable line of action, so... We're just going to go into game two, and like you said, going first there in game one for Paleozoic was pretty critical, being able to set up that much uh, against the very strong opening of Salomon Great. But now we're going to see Salomon Great set up uh, with a copy of Foxy, uh, Desires, Two Traps, and a Will. Well, uh, this seems unlosable from a perspective of Salomon Great. Um, obviously, what you want to see if you are Paleozoic is things that force out your opponent's interactions, so you can force through something like a Totally Awesome. Evenly matched is a great way to do that, but unfortunately, with nothing but the active cards in the hand outside of Evenly, it seems unlikely they're going to be able to uh, wrap this one up. Going Foxy into Baylinks into Foul, uh, we can bring back the Foxy with this uh, Will of the Salaman Great, fire off this Pot of Desires now that Sanctuary is no longer in the deck. A couple of cards, and what do you know? Uh, a Sinet Mining off the top. Pretty excellent. Yeah, that's going to be pretty beneficial here, uh, getting rid of the one for one that couldn't really activate anyway. Uh, and then getting access to Gazelle here, so now we're probably guaranteed to have a trap, because uh, this player is playing two each of Rage and Roar, so we're probably going to end on uh, three traps plus Gazelle back in hand. And this seems over. Uh, we'll be able to use the effect of Wolf to get back the Rage here. We can set a Solemn Judgment. We can set an Infinite Impermanence. If we like, we can go a little bit farther with Will, but really no reason to just save it for the following turn. All right, and notably, the Evil Match also has an answer in it with a Solemn Judgment. So uh, it's looking pretty bad here for Paleo, but we'll see if uh, setting five is going to be enough here, or setting four in main phase two. All right, so Rage is going to get two of them. Dynamicious and Solemn are pretty much the two best ones. Uh, in standby, their opponent's going to flip what I imagine is like a Lost Wind. Uh, they're going for the Dynamicious right now, targeting this copy of Sunlight Wolf uh, and potentially getting a Paleozoic from the graveyard. Yeah, got to get your advantage while you can uh, before Solomon Great pops off too hard. But unfortunately, there is still a will, so there is certainly recovery. All right, Will can bring back uh, Gazelle, and I think that is likely the end of the game. Oh, they're just going to bring back Sunlight Wolf, says, eh, whatever, I might as well Reincarnation Summon here. All right, going into battle, we'll see if Lost Wind is going to come down to try and mitigate some of the damage here. Um, it's frustrating. I think you have to actually take it. If you activate Lost Wind now, um, you can get back a monster, but you can also prevent your opponent. Ooh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Continuing the attack, uh, you can activate Lost Wind in the damage step, which prevents a redeclare. But if you're summoning a monster, you have to do it on attack declaration, uh, at which point your opponent can just decline the attack. They went for it anyway, but no harm, no foul. There is still a Bailing in the graveyard. Um, afterwards, they'll be able to link from Wolf into Wolf, get back Rage, pop those cards in the standby phase, and that is probably the end of the game. All right, and picking up a Fiend Griefing off the top, not really going to help that. So, uh, looks like... We're just going to oh. allow the main phase to proceed. And Toad actually has managed to hit the board. Now, to be fair, there is an impermanence, but I feel like if you rage earlier, then uh, you kind of prevent this from happening. Uh, but it looks like... Still fine. Uh, we'll be able to rage here, uh, target the Toad and the Morella, get just about everything. Gain a Lost Wind, uh, that's no big deal, doesn't do anything. They get to activate the effect of Toad, uh, but because there's only one copy, they're going to have to give it back to them. And uh, with a Fiend Griefing as the only extender in the uh, Paleozoic player's hand, I would really imagine this is going to be the end of the game. Yeah, with no real reliable way to deal with Will, um, there's definitely going to be... It's probably going to be the end of the game here. I'm going to shuffle back Gazelle, but of course we can just still bring back other stuff. Uh. 
But we'll see if Backjack can actually get anything. Right, uh, they're just uh, about Lost Wind right here. From here we can go into a Foul, get in directly for 600 and 950. 900. Alright, it looks like main phase two, we can just, uh, we can keep getting back copies of, uh, of Rage. Oh, actually, I think that might be the last copy of Wolf. Yeah, because the first one was banished. So, right. no, no Wolf to recycle Rage here. Uh, but, uh, at the end of battle phase makes this Heat Leo extremely live. Uh, they can chain the, uh, Fiend Griefing, but there's not anything really fantastic to shuffle. Proxy's all right, but you've got nothing to send to the graveyard. They get a level two monster, so theoretically, uh, they could go into a toad if they are lucky enough to draw a level two off the top of the deck. But oh, that'll do. What do you know? The best one. So uh, the send off swap frog is going to be met with Ash, but it looks like we're going to be able to go into possibly an Opabinia here. Now the question is, what can you search to get yourself out of this situation? All he needs is cute, but you really would have preferred to get something better. If the Swap Frog had sent a Ronin Toad, and you could activate the Oli Nades, uh, that will off your opponent's side of the field, and then bring back uh, a uh, Paleozoic from your graveyard alongside a Ronin to make like a Toad. As is, this is an exceptionally weak setup play. Yeah, it looks like, I guess, Swallowing Up is the play? Um, there is actually no Bailings in the Salomon Great Players Graveyard because uh, they did not turn the Foul into a Bailings before going Heat Leo, so um, this Will is actually susceptible to Olenoids here. Right, and that is exactly what's going to happen. Um, there is a second one for next turn, but we just massively slowed down the pace of the game. Wow, and uh, Salomon Great um, kind of faltering here. It's very difficult for it to uh, play through pretty much exactly a monster with 2400 defense um the roar makes quick work of the opabinia however and uh solemn judgment is looking real bad when you've got nothing to react to all right we'll see if it's going to be forced on the will um you have to but it's still not fantastic if they drew any salad they win even so they're going to be able to do 23 set of solemn judgment and dare you to pop off yeah, and uh, this is a game state where top decking really isn't going to get you out of the situation unless if you draw like a Desires or a Card Demise. Um, and even though we can get a Paleo off this Impermanence in theory, uh, that only at best buy us a turn. And at worst, they draw Gazelle, and that's probably the end of the game. It's like they're not even going to bother normally. Uh, they're going to activate Infinite Impermanence, be met with the Solemn Judgment, and say, oh, fine, I suppose I'll concede. All right, so let's see if the trend of going first and winning the game will continue in game three. Okay, um, well, this is a pretty reasonable hand out of both players. Um, the Paleozoic player has Dupe Frog, and uh, one additional frog will be all the setup they could ever hope for. Uh, they have a Solemn Judgment for the Lightning Storm that is lurking in the Salman Great player's hand, and the Salman Great player's draws uh, will determine if this is a winnable game or not, I think. All right, Desires is going to be MVP for either player. So we're going to see the first one come down. Three swaps again. Oh my. So That's not very good. Yeah, there is not going to be enough spaces to actually, you know, make use of card demise. So we're just going to hold it for next turn. All right, Lightning Storm going to be judgmented. No surprises here. And we're going to normal Jack Jaguar, which is going to immediately be met with a Canadia. Well, uh, dang, failing to Pot of Desires early kind of cost them here. If they draw an extra summon like a Foul or a Gazelle, it's nowhere near as good as it would have been uh, had they held it. Um, Canadia making quick work of them. All right, so we have a Falco and a Debug. So I guess the only real play is to possibly will out Falco. Um, but, like, you're not really going to be advancing your game state that much. Uh, looks like... We're going to see Bailinx come down. Let's see if Sanctuary was actually banished. And it looks like it might have been. Well, that's really bad for them, actually. Um, Reincarnation summoning would have been a fantastic way to keep that uh, roar as live as possible. But as is, uh, it actually doesn't accomplish too much. 
All right, an end phase. Fiend Griefing is going to come down uh, just to send back Jack um, and also to trigger Canadia. So this awesome. is more for just tempo. And looks like we're going to grab a trap off the top and it's going to be Trap Trick, which That's is... That's pretty much the best one. They can activate that immediately to get a copy of... Uh... Nades, and then they hit the roar blind. Wow! And suddenly they're in the driver's seat. Yeah, they have to play through just a single solemn judgment, and uh, that's not too hard when you have a pretty solid backup plan in like getting more paleos onto the field. So we'll see. We'll see if he's going to immediately go for a toad, which I imagine would get judgmented in this case. Oh, absolutely. We get to activate the effect of Toad, going for dupe here, telegraphing that whatever that they can activate to get back a Paleozoic and potentially start winning the game with uh, Opabinia. Yep, and there's that backup plan that I mentioned. So we're going to go into uh, just straight up the battle phase. Up uh, and doing some math. Alright, looks like main phase 2 going into Opabinia. And we'll see what we grab. Possibly Canadia, just to try and book the normal summon again, or a Dinomiscus as well. This is kind of frustrating. Like, you maybe want uh, an Oleonades to uh, destroy your opponent's copy of Will, but because you did it post-combat, they have the Bailinx in the graveyard, and uh, it's going to be very hard to get rid of that without minusing yourself in the process. Alright, so Jaguar being flipped, and then we're going to normal summon Lady Debug. Uh, which, for fortunately, the Gazelle didn't get banished, so uh, there's a little bit of solace here. Uh, going into Splash Mage right away. Uh, oh, wow, we're trying to end the game, huh? Yeah, so I feel like this is trying to force out the Dynamiscus as early as possible, which, uh, of course, we know that the Paleozoic player has, um, and then follow up with, like, a will play. We're going to... Uh... Activate Fiend Griefing Chain Link 3. They're targeting Jaguar, even though it's not the Splash Mage target, just because they think uh, over the course of a game it'll represent more Link material. Splash Mage is a, kind of a new inclusion in these types of decks, but you use it to bring back a Cyburst, go into a 3, go into Transcode, and from there, Access Code just wins the game on its own. All right, looks like Lost Wind reset itself, uh, and there is still a uh, Gazelle in the hand here uh, for Salamon Great, if needed. For what it's worth, going into transcode here is basically the only scenario in which you lose the game. They can activate uh, Paleozoic Dynamicious from the hand uh, and uh, banish the transcode, which needs a monster added to Link Arrows specifically. Alright, looks like Spinny is going to be activated to boost Splash Mage. Uh, so we can sure. possibly trigger a Gazelle uh, and send a copy of Rage. Spinny will come back. And from here, we're going to go into Update Jammer. Oh boy. So this is a really, really big push here. All right, and as you mentioned... Right. Uh, as expected, Chainlink 2 targeting the transcode. Uh, that was known information. I can't imagine they don't have a backup plan. Uh, I'm not sure if Will was used his turn yet. Um, so if it wasn't, then we can make a little bit of a recovery. Going into Baylinx. And then, yep, there's the will. So we're gonna go ahead and summon back Gazelle. It's interesting that Roar was set, or sorry, Rage was set, uh, instead of something like the Jaguar that was shuffled back preemptively but hadn't used its effect yet. So like, after summoning this wolf, like there's not really a whole lot of action to be done. Uh, and then that's just gonna be a pass. You can't even reincarnation summon without access to Sanctuary or another extender help it feel like better sends off of uh, those effects over the course of the turn or better planning around what you knew your opponent had could have led the Salman great player to a victory this specific game. Yeah, certainly if you send a Jaguar, you can at the very least get Gazelle back in hand and then turn like the the uh, wolf and the, the Jaguar into another wolf and then reset the roar off its own effect. So that could have been a line of play. Even rage from this position feels like it kind of wins the game. Alright, so we'll see. All right, Leoncolia is going to be searched, so this is going Pretty to be... Think, huh? Yeah, this is just uh, super, super advancing your game state uh, and putting back your own Toten, which has exactly one frog to bring itself back with.
right, linking into Coral, Coral Anemone, and then just uh, bringing it back. Uh, we're going to Lost Wind the Sunlight Wolf to be able to bring back the Leoncolia. And then possibly go into the Anomaly Karis again. This is the second time we've seen Anomaly Karis. I did not think this card was good enough to warrant this. Well, turn oh, wow. one, you can... Just completely baffling. <laughs> why Why protect it like this? Would it have been lethal? Oh, it would have. Alright, so... A Peril Exceed off the top. Probably one of the worst draws. Uh, and that is going to spell game. So, uh, looks like Anomal Car is putting a lot of work. Um, looks like a tribal Dryden is pretty good in simplified game states. And yeah, um, can help but feel though if the Salman great player had just respected their opponent's game plan a little bit better, they could have walked with this. Uh, it seems like a lot of investment into the Splash Mage line uh, really blew up in their face as their opponent just responded with a single Dynamicious. Um, Ah, this was a game that I really, if I was a salad player, would felt would have felt has uh, just completely slipped through my fingers. Yeah, I feel like there are definitely plays that could have uh, affected the game in such a way where the salad player would have actually maintained like the resource loop of like recycling gazelle and the traps, because um, it was definitely there, especially with uh, Will being active um, after the Dynamiscus was used. But um, unfortunately for the salad player, uh, not meant to be for this game. Uh, but the Paleo player showing that even with one Toad, you can actually use the uh, themed Paleozoic XYZs uh, to actually you know, control the board state, which is pretty cool to see. I am pulling for this player to make top 8. Uh, I would absolutely love to cast Paleozoic once again. Um, I think it's gotten a lot of new tools uh, in stuff like Marincess Coral Anemone that people just haven't paid attention to because the overall strategy isn't strong again. Hoping to see you again. Alright, so that's going to do us here for round 5. We'll see you in the next one.